You, you don't have to sit down. You can stand up because we are moving after Villa's presentation. But if you want to sit down, please. Okay. Quite many seems to be here already now. As I said, you don't have to sit down. We are, you are going to move away or around, not away, around the building. Okay, it's 10 to 1. Tony, ready? Tony is taking care of our webcast tomorrow. Thank you, Tony. And next, Ville Tenhunen, who works in the Center for Information Technology of the University of Helsinki as a team leader of the IT for Science group. He has also managed some latest research data projects in the university and you were also involved in open science and research in, in Finland. And you act as data support co-coordinator. Okay. He's also co-chair of the research data architectures in research institutions interest group of RDA. Again, RDA, but not this time CSC, but University of Helsinki. Ville, tell us what to do next. Oh yes, thank you, Pauli. <clears throat> Um, well, now we are start to walking through the jungle, as I can say, or at least at least walking here in in, in Pastorni. I have a short short presentation about uh, this workshop and how to do that and what we are going to do, and uh, then the floor is yours because you are doing this walking and so on. And, also the and of course, yes. And also those who are who are operating this event as a remote participant, and I have uh, some instructions also for them. Okay, uh, some words about European Open Science Cloud Services. Here we are using this catalog, catalog, catalog.elsportal.eu. Uh, there is in internet, internet there is an other. Yersk services catalogs, but and they are very good ones. But we are using at this workshop that one, and uh, there you can find 154 services and resources offered by 18 service providers uh, from the public and private sectors. Well, uh, idea is that researchers can find those services from the portals and and then catalogs and. Another part is that service providers can join the club, which means that you can you can um, you can inform e European Open Science Cloud that you have some kind of services and and then take apart the project. What kind of services is there? There is uh, some categories. Uh, as a matter of fact, there is uh, ten categories, and behind those there is a. Uh, number of different services. Here is also teams and uh, here is the numbers what how many services is in in such an uh, category or or different team and uh, well there is uh, for example 86 for sharing and discovery and and 41 for data data management and this data is our only service which is overlapping with those teams and those categories. So there is this kind of, how can I say, something to do with vocabularies. But, well, it it's, looks quite clear to me. Well, these services are those services what we are exploring today, this afternoon. And um, our target is to make those services, European Open Science Cloud services, more familiar, for for uh, more familiar to us, and uh, uh, digging the information about those services, and uh, well, idea is to collect information about 
awareness of the services and sharing information about those services and how we, if we have used something or, or what kind of experiences we have already. Well, technicalities for this workshop part is, uh, or method, it's, uh, this is a one kind of gallery walk or open space uh, facilitation method if, if you are interested in these kind of questions. Uh, well, we are applying freeway that one because we are so many, which is which is good one. Uh, well, the basic idea is that participant decide what he or she would like to see or what he, where she would like to go. And uh, well, we have uh, here three rooms. This one, this plenary room. Then we have a room called uh, now called Tan Tan Tanjanika, which is uh, on. In this same floor is uh, Matti Paasivirta in Finnish. Paasivuori, sorry. Uh, it's in Finnish, Paasivuori. Uh, and then we have a Kilimanjaro you have to climb a little bit, which means that it's uh, on the floor number three. Uh, and there is, uh, it's a number... 301. 301, yes, in Finnish. Well, these translations are quite free today, so... Well, there is a, in each room have some presentations of services. Here will be presentations on slides also. But there is also this kind of papers. What you what you can see here right now, there is a presentations of every single services what you can find from the catalog on the paper, and then there is a slideshows and so on. Then, uh, of course, you can find some more information from the from the internet if you have a laptop or something with you. And um, well, then there is uh, some, oh, here, yes. Here is uh, this method, uh, some categories which is in the room. And here in the plenary room, we have a biggest number of different services presented. Uh, then I have changed, last minute change that uh, this, um, these services, which are under a Tanjanika right now, they are on the third floor, and here is in the Kilimanjaro. There is a, those. Uh, here is in the Tanjanika. There is those services, which are smallest number. These ones are here in this floor, and these another ones are on the third floor. This is because of, of the size of the rooms, because the, they are not similar size. Yeah. Then we have some questions to answer to you. Uh, what are the services you know already? And uh, here is those papers, papers, and you are so-called voting those services or marking those services you know by tally marks. Tukki miehen kirjanpito in Finnish, and you are putting those marks in the, into those papers. And another one, there is a post-it, uh, post uh, um, those yellow ones, yellow one, yellow and so on, post-its, and you can use them as a comment for a comments, or if you have some experiences, you can describe those services and what there is a good parts and bad parts and so on. And if there is something missing, we have a these these flaps, and you can put those po post-it. Posted cards also into these ones. So three questions: What are services you know? And uh, if you know someone, please comment on it. And then, if you find something what is missing from the catalog, please uh, put the post-it about that. And the main idea is that you take you just explore those services and tr try to figure out what they are, what they do, what, how you can use, and so on. How useful these services are for you. Because those services are in the core of those, this kind of project in everywhere, and they are those useful parts for researchers, which is the end of the day, the most important thing in every international and national infrastructure project, I think. In my humble opinion, I have seen quite many projects everywhere. So, well, any questions so far? 
is this some way clear or unclear what should be doing? Okay, let's continue shortly about remote participant part. So the uh, questions are similar, that there is uh, this catalog in the web and the URL is here. And then there is a survey in the web and uh, there is also address for that. And you can find the address also from the Twitter tweet, which I, I have sent already with this open air EU uh, hashtag. And you can find the, the, this presentation from there and there's those links and so on. Remote participants should, be, should do the same things that explore all those services and answer the survey in the, in the net. Hopefully this was also a little bit clear. Okay, scheduling this presentation. I don't know what is what time is it right now. Uh, yes, I, right on time. Uh, one minute behind. So, three working workshop in three rooms, and uh, I'm dividing you in three parts. Uh, quite soon. Then we have a uh, quarter past two. We have a coffee break, half an hour coffee break, and after that we are we have here. Uh, presenting results and then discussing discussion session, which takes uh, 40 minutes. And now Paul would like to say something. Uh, and and for the remote participants, uh, uh, the webcast continues when the presenting of results starts, so we won't have webcast from this, what's happening here. So come back, do your homework and come back quarter to... Uh, Three. Yes. Okay, any questions? All right. Yes, uh, that one. And now uh, we have to remember that Kilimanjaro and Tanzania, they have shifted the places, so they are another in other places, but these are the, those categories. And now, okay, now we start to walking through this jungle and trying to explore all those services and find out what we know already, what is missing, what we would like to comment. And half of the audience, please stay here and start the this place and then one quarter goes to the floor, third floor and one quarter goes to the the, the, on the same same room, which is over there, is uh, this. Um, wait a second. It was um, Tanjanika room. So half, because these rooms are not same size. So it's a, and you of course you are deciding what to do and where to do and where to walk and so on. But let's start from the different places. One third on the third floor. One third into the. Smaller room at the same floor, and half of you, please stay here. Okay, it's uh, over quarter to three. Welcome back. And now we will uh, present the results of the <coughs> workshop. So, will please. All right. Um, first of all, thank you, thank you everybody to to joining this workshop and uh, this walking around our service jungle and uh, making making number of notes. Uh, well, first of all, I present some results. What services are known services, best known services? How many they are, and and what kind of comments we have received and. Uh, then we have a this kind of general discussion about this European Open Science Cloud services services situation. All right, and then we have uh, some slides. Uh, all right, here is the twenty best known services what we received from those papers, and uh, how can I say? 
the winner is Cenodo, which, which was not actually a big surprise. And the second is uh, Edurome, and that was a slightly surprise because I presume that most of us has used Edurome in some cases. If you have visited in the university or something, you have used Edurome actually. Uh, fix share, third, uh, B to drop, B to share, B to find, B to access. Uh, here is a four UDAT services. Then open air discovery portal. It's uh, quite known in this in this uh, presentation. B to save, edu gain, uh, and B B to handle again. UDAT services and networking services. Uh, then open air. Open Air Content Provider Dashboard, uh, Eduro Managed EIDP, um, Clarin, Open Air Dashboard, Amnesia is quite, five people has known that one, Trusted certifi Certificate Service, Brace Advanced Dead Training Centers, Open Air Validator, Open Air Mining Service, and B2 Stage. There is a, there is a three people who has known this. There is a, Actually, if you can put the next one, there is actually 53 services which have got at least one vote and uh, 101 services which got zero vote. So nobody, nobody says that known one, more than one, 101 services. So it's a 66% of the European Open Science Cloud services from that catalog is unknown for us. And 34% uh, 30, uh, is no. All right. Uh, I presume beforehand I thought that these numbers will be a little bit different. So that this number of the unknown services is a little bit higher, but but, but it's 66 is a quite good number, or 30, 34. Well, this kind of, this kind of uh, numbers, and uh, as, you, as far as I know, Paulo will, will write some kind of blog post in the future about this, this, uh, about this event and also about these results and so on. Then we have uh, some comments and uh, some stories about experiences from some other rooms and uh, well uh, i would like to ask for yari and uh, was it henrika to explain what what kind of comments you have received in 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 those papers okay thank you willem uh, actually we only uh, greetings from uh, tang and chica first uh, uh, we only had one post-it note in Tang and Chica, and the comment was about collaboration, collaboration framework service, and the comment was that it sounds interesting and useful. But actually, I don't think no one has actually used the service itself. So, but anyway, uh, then uh, we didn't have any other comments, but I, I think that uh, I saw some people taking photographs of those services, uh, actually, one was actually talking about one cloud computing service that she could recommend the service for a researcher that she knows. So, so although we didn't have much comments, so I would say that at, at least some of the services uh, uh, seemed to be useful for some of the visitors, I think. But uh, I think that was all about the Tang and Chica meeting room and I would like to give this for someone else from other room. Oh yes, uh, how about Kilimanjaro? Was it uh, Kim or...? Okay, Enrico? Yep, okay. Um, so Kilimanjaro, where we had the top two, we had both Zenodo and Edurome on our um, services. Same thing, 
very, very few comments. Mainly, that is a very cool acronym and sounds like a very useful service. Um, so th there wasn't a lot of interaction around people having used them because the, the most used ones were Senator Anne Ederome, which didn't, I guess, spark a lot of comments. So gladly, we had a lot of people who knew some of the services and had used them. We also had a conversation, what um, counts as knowing the service? When can you tick it off? Does it mean that you've heard about it once? Or does it mean that you've visited it once? So you've actually engaged with it properly? So there is a, is a little variation on what, what counted as knowing a service. Oh yes, thank you, Henrik. Um, and then some comments from from this plenary room. Uh, here is something something ch about generic categories. Uh, is this generic category or specific service provided by a specific service provider? Well, it's a comment about these categories. A uh, little bit similar comment about software repository. Uh, this was open science training service, that first comment one, and this for is for software repository. That is this a service by the Blue Bridge project and they have just forgotten to put project name to title, otherwise very generic, yeah? Be to find differs, differs how of open air ETC and other one portals which uh, include metadata or data as well. It's uh, about be defined and then praise training portal. A lot of praise training available at CSC, uh, being being one of the praise training centers. Yes, CSC is the one praise training center, and that's the way to get this kind of training. Well, then. Uh, some comments from the flap. Uh, I miss a meaningful link between the services, the list and categories are not sufficient. Well, uh, this is the way how to present all these things and what kind of structure and stuff like that. S then something missing. There is a, obviously something missing. For example, my field, political sciences, is missing. There's a lot of election and so on data available at uh, FSD. Are they going to join? Uh, which means perhaps FSD, are they going to join European Open Science Cloud? And then, is there a validation process on which services are included in European Open Science Cloud portal or catalog? Is providing a description enough? Well, very good question. Uh, yeah, one size fits all data visualization tool. Well, this kind of comment, data visualization tool. One size fits all data visualiz visualization tool is missing. Yes, now I understood right away. Okay, and this uh, this comment is in Finnish, and uh, as far as I understood, it's the same thing than it's here in, in English. Okay, then uh, it's time to have discussion. Yeah, there is uh, some... Pardon? Question? Yes? Um, please. Thank you. I'm Helena Laaksonen, the director of FST. And uh, as we sp uh, speak here now, there is a kickoff meeting of um, one of the projects that were pre presented earlier. So we are kind of examining joining through SESTA, Eric, of course. So the project is between uh, uh, humanities and social sciences, uh, Eric's, and it will be running 
from now on. So we'll hear about it later. Oh yes, thank you, thank you very much. So uh, FSD possibly will going to join the European Open Science Cloud family. Ah, well, then, oh, now the discussion is open that, and perhaps some, some open questions that, well, did, did this kind of, uh, well, do, do you feel that these uh, European Open Science Cloud services are a little bit more understandable or familiar or something? Or, and uh, is there something useful? when you are working as a researcher or, or support people, services, people are, are supporting the researchers and so on. Uh, and this what missing point or, or any other, other point of views about European Open Science Cloud services? How do you feel about these services or European Open Science Cloud service catalogs and something? There, please. Thank you. I'm Ursa Neumann from Obo Academy. I'm the Open Science Project Manager. And um, I have one worry, and it is that um, I have uh, my background is also in research, and I have also been involved in EU projects. And we created a fantastic, lovely platform that everyone will love when they will use it, and nobody really did. And then it stayed there. So. I saw that many of the services are in production mode. Does, it, does this mean that they are finished? These, uh, yeah. these services yeah. in catalog? Yeah. Well, I think that they are mostly in, in, in the production phase. Yeah. So they are in, in use. Are they finished? Well, uh, actually, no, these kind of services are not... Never finished. Never, yeah. <laughs> never ready yeah. or finished. Yeah. But this I worry about because in my role is to help the researchers find their way to, to these tools and services and resources and, and I don't want to help them and make them start using something that then won't last or something that there will be problems with, that something that just won't work in their everyday lives. So this is my worry and if somebody can reassure me I'd be happy to hear. Yeah, thank you. Marco. Marco from the University of Helsinki Library. Uh, in the top of my shopping list would be a social media platform for academics, which is based on Zenodo. I mean, the file sign Zenodo, but there are up to, on top of that would be built a something that will be out of uh, academic video and research gate and is not commercial. And I think uh, researchers would be gladly, I think most of the researchers would be gladly to change into that. Mm, yes, this kind of uh, Facebook of uh, research data and publications <laughs> and so on. Very good idea. Ah, Ank, please. So it's me again. <laughs> um, we had a, a discussion at the table now in the, during the coffee break, and I think that service catalog in EOS it's a nightmare. And it's a jungle. Imagine a researcher going to EOSC portal and finds 157 services. Like really, it's going through all of them. It should be a bit of a structure. Some they, they should be in a, in a different way made because there are too many and the number will grow. I'm, I'm pretty sure about this if EOSC will survive. But this is my, uh, my comment on this. There are too many and it, it's a nightmare to search something there. Thank you. Please, uh, um, Tero Sili from Finnish Meteorological Institute. I, I think my comment is a little bit of a follow-on to my esteemed colleague from FMI. One one thing uh, aspect that I sort of that attracted my attention and not in a positive way 
was that um, the, uh, shall we say, the, the grain size was so different. I mean, there's like uh, Prace, and then there's like 10 different services under that label. And in, in some other instances, there's a single service maybe. Uh, now, I haven't used the, uh, the service mice or the EOSC myself, but it, uh, it feels a little bit like that you need a search engine within the, uh, the, the service. Uh, this is an exaggeration of a bit, but on purpose. But, uh, but some kind of um, hierarchy or, or something like that, so that or, or some other way of classifying them might help if the number of the services remains as high or increases even further. Thank you. Yeah, that, uh, this is a one. Uh, well, one one thing which I have also recognized that there is a, there is a different size of services. Some are very large and generic, and then there is a, some quite. How can I say? They are not small, but this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, one. One kind of small, a little bit small, smaller services, and then you're comparing big things and small things. And some of those services are, it looks to me that they are part of the bigger infrastructure, and then there is a mix, mixing infras and and then services and something something like that but of course it's a uh, well it's something what is develop there will be some kind of development and as and i believe also that there will be a number of new services and then there have to be different ways to categorize these things and this service engine is a it's a good idea in in this kind of cases and well uh, of course i don't know what what are the european open science clouds cloud uh, um, plans in the future about these cate categories or, or catalogs or something. But, well, I think that it's a good idea that there is this kind of information and you can get it, even if it's a little bit hard to handle. And maybe, for example, in the university, we can make our own applications or apply this kind of this information some, some way. Okay, any... Are we, are we, one minute, Pauli? Ah, Pauli have a comment, all right. Thank you for all the comments so far. Uh, the sustainability issue is very good because uh, if you check from EOSC's uh, portal, you see that most of these uh, uh, services are built up and provided by projects, which will in, end in two or three years time and to tackle that uh, uh, for example Eudat has uh, own company open air has now a legal entity organization so uh, service providers are tackling with the uh, sustainability issue because we have recognized that earlier what uh, was mentioned or uh, uh, at least mentioned earlier today that it was that uh, we used EOS catalog today and there is a couple of other catalogs under uh, umbrella of EOS, for example A Infra Central, EOS Hub and Open Air which uh, are partly overlapping and this doesn't make the jungle any easier to uh, provide to researchers so and I have seen plans uh, when, when talking about will there be more uh, services we heard about FSD planning to join and, and the one slide I have seen uh, last year was something like uh, the one of these portals should be like Momondo in traveling, so researchers just goes there and picks up what is needed, and I think there is quite a long way to that point. Maybe mostly because uh, probably research, making research and using research services, services for research is a little more complicated than flying from point A to B or even 
from B to C. So there will be uh, many more uh, services included in these portals and I think uh, we have a common goal. Uh, I'm from Helsinki University Library, so with my colleagues we have to think about how to promote this to, uh, uh, and with the ICT center, how to promote this to our researchers. And that was one goal we had for this day that we could share this, uh, these ideas. And I hope you have uh, find new friends and talked with old friends about this. I have one question. This was my comment part. Now comes my question. Uh, it's uh, it's the uh, is there something useful you have found? Put your hand up if you have found at least one thing which was useful. Okay. Okay. Almost everyone. Thank you. Because my goal was for this day to this question. I want at least one hand up and I got so many. Thank you. Thank you, Pauli. Um, yes, any other comments? Please, Johan. Johan Hakala from National Library of Finland. Um, my problem with this and uh, generally with services maintained by other parties is when is that uh, service mature and stable enough so that you can promote it to the users? We have a long experience of this kind of problem also with the uh, services produced in uh, EU projects like uh, the Union Catalog, the European Library, which never reached the state where I could have honestly said to people that use it, it's good. And uh, I think we are missing tools for evaluating these services, the maturity level and, and completeness. And this kind of analysis should be done even though the results could be somewhat embarrassing in services that are just about starting. We should be honest about how good or less good these services are because a, a researcher who uses a system and is disappointed is not likely to come back. I remember the first evaluation we did with the European Library and some sympathetic users said, I wish it worked. And I'm hoping that we will not be in the same situation with these services. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, maturity and quality of the services are, and how to evaluate that, it's a very important question in the, in the future. Yeah, uh, you might have noticed that in, in, in these uh, descriptions there is this technical technology readiness level, which is a standard way to put this, and not all of them are uh, in the top, I think it's number nine is top. For example, this phenomenon here is uh, uh, number seven, system prototype demonstration operational environment. So it's in operational environment, but we hope that it works. So a very good point. And uh, again, one of the things in sustainability, uh, we have better versions, we have uh, prototypes, and, and for example, EOSC pilot, uh, in, in, in EOSC pilot, they uh, emphasize that it's piloting things. So EOSC pilot is not providing uh, ready services or uh, full services for anyone, but they are piloting things. And it's, as you have mentioned, it's a long way from there to the production level and functioning services. So. And, and about Henrika commenting that uh, awareness is only the first stage, you know, in, in marketing analysis or marketing uh, questions. Uh, the first thing is that does your customer know your product? And if he or she knows, has she or she, he used it and, and 
I think we have to continue this steps up upwards, trying to find best services for our researchers. Thank you. Um, any other point of views or questions or, or comments? Well, what is our time situation? Ten minutes. Yeah, a couple of one one important thing. One one important thing which which came up here so is that uh, this researcher's point of view. For example, in the University of Helsinki, um, I count at least three service catalogs for researchers, including services in the area of research data, open science, uh, and so on. So we, even in, in one institution, we have three. Then, of course, we have uh, national catalogs, we have uh, European Open Science catalogs, and many, many other catalogs. And uh, I understand that it looks as a jungle for a researcher. And uh, the, I think that it's uh, one important thing what we have to, as a, those who, who of us are service providers or creating services or, or develop something, it's a point of view that what we have to take into account that, okay, uh, how researcher feels all these things. In the University of Helsinki, we have a, I have counted that li library have own guides, uh, IT center has own guides, and then we have a common service also. So there is something what we have to do uh, to be as, uh, more user friendly, more researcher friendly. Well, but time situation. To that, I, uh, I could add that, that uh, some of you are already participating in the Open Science uh, Group, Tutkijan Palvelut, Services for Researcher, and in that group we continue this discussion about how to promote these things to uh, the researchers. And I, I'm not sure who is taking who will tackle that question you had about the quality of services? Who who is making the evaluation of services, or is it just, as I have heard, Villa telling that it's the law of jungle that makes selection of survivals in this jungle service jungle? Ah uh, well, yes, uh, there was some discussion about that, but uh, user decide. There is a number of services. And then researchers who are using these services or not decide what services lives after next five years, ten years. I, I don't know, but of course it's a well. I, I see that this value comes from the from the researchers and science. That's that's why those services are. They are not for, for example, for me because I'm this kind of administrative guy. So I'm just supporting things. And one, one question we haven't uh, discussed about today uh, is uh, funding. When the, when the, there is a funded project going on, making uh, services. Uh, it's okay, but after project ends, what happens if there is not ERIC, if there is not a legal entity? And what about the funding of EOSC? I didn't want to ask from Sara because I know the situation that uh, there is no answers at the moment how EOSC will be funded. I've seen the last November, October, something like that, when there was this EOSC pilot stakeholder forum. Uh, I think it was Moedas who, who said that, uh, had a slide w w that there will be a funding model that mm, probably will include national funding. So that means that in, in, in the national level we have to uh, involve ourselves in, in some kind of funding model. 
that uh, uh, makes these services going on in, in future. But as now, no one knows, I suppose. Or what, Sar? Yes, at the, at the moment nobody knows, but well, the idea of the governance framework now and the and the EOS governance board is that when there are all the member states involved, represented, and, and the European Commission, that during this two-year time they will make a decision and find find a solution for this funding issue. Yeah, and as you heard in, in Sarah's presentation, uh, you can join working groups. And the one was about governance and, and funding models, so please use the opportunity. Thank you. That's all. Any other no? issues, it questions, comments? Quiet in the jungle. If everyone is happy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Getting out of jungle, back <laughs> to the earth. Oh, okay. Thank you, Will. Thank you. I didn't remember this.